Okay. Well, we'll call to order, Rebecca. We're glad you're watching and taking notes. Um, this is Pearl Harbor Day. So Jerry, I would ask that you lead our Pledge of Allegiance and we dedicate that to the fallen soldiers from Pearl Harbor. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, do we have any deletions, corrections to the agenda? Does anyone have anything to say? Then could I get a motion to approve the agenda and a second? I'll second. Jerry made the motion to approve the agenda and <coughs> David seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, passed unanimous. Um, Rebecca has been working feverishly and has four meetings, minutes to approve the November 2nd, September 7th, August 3rd, and August 17th. I hope everybody got to read the minutes. And were there any corrections or anything in those minutes to be questioned at this time? If not, then could I have a motion to accept all four minutes, categories, and a second, please? Just one clarification on my part. I was around yes. three and accepted the other. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, who's going to motion to accept them? I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> the Rusty. four minutes to, as presented. Okay. Do I hear a second? <clears throat> we have a second from John. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Hearing none. Minutes approved. You did great, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, we're moving on to the deliverables for Mike Williams Development Firm. I would look at David to kind of take the lead in that. He talked to Mike and um, David. So in, in talking with Mike and just, you know, looking through some other projects I've done in the past, I came up with a short list of what I'd consider more the, the deliverables on the planning end for this, which in my mind constitutes an abbreviated concept plan submittal and a, an abbreviated letter of intent submittal. I think the, the biggest issue I think I'm feeling that we need to know and understand is, is mainly what their intent of development is and how it fits into the plan for, for the DDA. I mean, the DDA is supposed to be kind of a, a civic center for the city is the way I envision that property. And correct me if, if you guys don't see it that way, but we want to see something that, that, that's exciting and, and big in scope to go through the DDA property. Um, you know, the other aspect that I'd look for board input on is probably looking at viability of, of their partnership in, in you know, their group. And I understand it's a strong group and they've, they've got big partners to work with, but I just don't know that we've seen all that. And I think it, it's really, you know, moving forward to, to offering, you know, an exclusive development agreement with them. We need to understand those items um and then look to open it up to the board to talk about time frames and in those aspects for them to come up with that any more discussion from the board on that jerry well um, am i wrong in assuming that we've already offered them a development agreement i don't believe an agreement has been signed i think we've agreed in nature to, to do a development agreement but I think, you know, we, we haven't come to terms, signed an agreement, give them, given them exclusivity and, and oh, yeah. determine the deliverables. He was, he was giving, giving that opportunity. Mike, are you on there? Is Mike on Zoom? Evidently not. He must not be. Okay. Um, I, I think at this time, and David and I just talked, 
the funding is probably <clears throat> for the first 90 days to see that funding um, even before we see a really complete usable plan, I think is more important because I believe from what Mike had said that it may take them a little bit longer than the 90 days to put together that plan because of all the people that they would like to include. So it, it, I would like to see the funding for sure up front. And I think the, the time frames we're talking about, um, I think it was discussed to give them 90 days. And I think in that 90 days, they can come up with the level of concept plan I've requested. And given there, there's a lot of flexibility in what I'm asking for, there's no hard design. It's really looking at the nature of different parts of it and development, what they're targeting. I'm not a, you know, if it's, you know, commercial, I'm not asking for a building or anything else, just a relative size of commercial, not type of commercial. If it's recreational, I'm not asking them to delineate you what it is exactly, but just understanding the different pods of development and it, it's residential that, that I know they, they didn't include in their previous submittal. And so kind of see what that density and scope of the residential is as it affects that property. I think that's good. And I personally would like to see some real people. I mean, you know, uh, I think that we need to meet them. I think we need to sit across the table from them. The developers, not just Mike. And I don't know if the rest of the board feels that way, but that's kind of- I do, I yeah. I, I think that that should be a target at the end is, you know, yeah. meet and, and, and have a design group with the board. I don't know if he, oh, I good. Can you hear me? Glad you're here. We no. can't hear you. Uh, let me peek on that a little bit. Uh, let's see. I'm on microphone. Raise my volume. Mike, you're going in the opposite direction. You were a little <laughs> louder. Now it's gone to zero. How's that? That's better. Can you go louder? Maybe. How about now? That's better. Okay, great. I, it's still not, it's still not it, real we, good, though. Yeah, we can't hear you, Michael. Something's going on there. Hmm. Well, we're glad you're now? on there. We'll get the, we'll get the sound up. Any we'll better now? You. Okay, then keep going. Say more. I, okay, I don't have any further ability to raise mine. Okay, um, Michael Lawson's got it up a little bit too, so it's doing better. Okay, great. Talk some more. <laughs> well, hello guys, happy holidays. That's good. <laughs> hello. That's better, we can hear that a little better. Okay. All right. I'm usually loud, so I can get loud. Okay, speak, tell us what you think. Well, I'm not opposed to any of those. Uh, I was, uh, in fact, uh, we're waiting on to find out what those deliverables will be so that I can pass along to my guys. Uh, we expected things such as a letter of intent, uh, a, uh, formal, Louder. a formal or informal meeting uh, with the developers, uh, as well as myself. And uh, and some type of uh, scope concept, uh, or at least a uh, a plan to develop that, knowing which what the components are there. Is uh, so so David and I are, are all in agreement uh, for what he's what he's mentioned. Those don't seem unreasonable. What I what I did ask for David when we uh, spoke last week was that uh, we could get a pre look at those. I could forward those on to the lead developer and uh, uh, project developer and, and then he massage that if he needs to and, and then get them back so we can get an agreement. Okay, so then you are comfortable with what you and David have talked about. And Mike, I think part of our intent tonight is is to, to get a list out that we've all looked at and can send over to you to, to start working at. And, and that's what I figured, David, it was so, uh, you know, just a few days ago. So I figured you definitely <clears throat> a uh, okay. 
consensus okay. together on, on what those were. So I can appreciate that. Okay, well, we'll have some discussion here. So yes, if you yes. if you need to break in, talk louder because we can barely hear you. Yes, so let's have some discussion on what Mike and David have talked about so far. Rusty. Um, first of all, I, I do agree uh, with Mary Jo that uh, an aspect that should be included in a deliverable is some sort of evidence of financial viability of the developers, the, the, uh, the funding evidence. Um, so I, I second um, Mary Jo, your, your thoughts on that. The, the, the second thing that I, I think we should be asking for at some level is the financial viability of the, the project as it would pertain to the cost to the city. In other words, a rough order of magnitude of the infrastructure costs, and I'm talking about a ROM, not, not detailed uh, pricing, mm -hmm. but a order of magnitude of what the infrastructure costs for the project that you have envisioned and the revenue that would be generated that would be covering those costs because the city doesn't subsidize things long term. So um, at some level, there should be a financial piece of what they provide, even if it's rough. And you will have that, won't you, Mike? We, we agree with that idea, Rusty, so yes. Okay. He, so that's agreeable. Yes. He agrees. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mike. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Anything else? Well, I'd just like to sure. point out that at one time the city was totally willing to give that property to a developer for not cash consideration until recently. So um, I would say that, yeah, we should make sure that we know it's a, a good, viable, low cost to the uh, city. <coughs> But at the same time, it's going to be a whole lot better. Yeah, okay. as a council member, you, you, you know, we hear about the subsidizing of the swimming pool. And we've had violent arguments about how much the citizens have to subsidize that daggone pool, even though the citizens voted for it. The, the city, the citizens of Woodland Park are not hot on subsidizing anything. And so I don't think we're that this would even come close to that. Yeah, I think we're I think we'll be okay then. Yeah, because so we just all we all agree on that. Okay. Um, and I would like to to say, um, what are you, uh, the contract that was already drawn up? Will this fit in there? The um, uh, deliverables fit into that contract, and will that contract? suffice what we need to do for the next 90 days. And I think we can, you know, utilize the framework of the existing uh, contract and reference the exhibits of, of what we're looking for in addition. Okay, so we don't have an expense there. We've already paid for that. Right. So we can use that. And you are prepared to put in that contract for the deliverables, would you list them? I, I think I, I've come up with a framework. I, I was looking for some more board input until we contractualize it. Um, but, but Mike, I can read off the, the statements, you know. So really, as far as, you know, documents, I was looking for two items and then further discussion with the board on the third, which would be the financial and partnership viability. For, you know, deliverable one would be a project statement providing a clear description of the proposed development impact on existing and surrounding developments, discussion of permitted uses, variance requirements, discussion of proposed ingress, egress, traffic circulation of the parcel and impacts, discussion of pedestrian circulation, and discussion of how the development fulfills the vision of the parcel as a downtown draw, central business entertainment corridor. Um, okay, Michael, does that sound good to you, Mike? Well, uh, it, it, it may work. I, all, obviously, all of those are important. Um, time frame is my only concern there. Mike, we can't hear you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Is that any better? 
Uh, talk really have, loud. Yeah, you have to okay. almost yell. Well, all of this is certainly important, and all of those at some time frame will come forward. Um, I think, you know, I, I, I need our project lead guy to look at them line by line and see if uh, any of those maybe need to fit into a second uh, phase past the 90 days. I, I don't want to overpromise uh, because uh, I honestly don't have a good feel on how each each one of those items just mentioned by David, uh, whether they can all be concluded in that time frame or not. I would like well, let me ask in, in, in understood, Mike, that, you know, really, I, I looked through a couple of different, you know, municipal codes, and it's it's along the lines of a project statement, but much abbreviated, um, not looking you to address specific codification or ordinances, but really get a feel for the project in your project statement. I, I think all the things that I've mentioned are, are something you're, you're, you're more than willing to bring to the table. And in fact, it makes a successful project. But but you need to read the list, I think, before you can can make that commitment. Agreed. Agreed. So and let me ask you this and the rest of the board, if we put these deliverables in there and if you could fill at least half of them by the end of the 90 days or our meeting with the developers and extend the others to another 30 days or 60 days, would that would that be acceptable to the board and to you? I, I think we'd like to see them all filled. I don't think they're that that difficult to do. No. I mean, yeah. Okay. Looking then do you this, do you David agree with that, Mike? Out. That you could get those done he in ninety he, days. Mike, Mike hasn't seen the list yet. So. Yeah. I oh, I didn't realize you hadn't I, seen the list. Yeah, I'm and sorry. Our, and our project lead hasn't <laughs> seen them. More importantly, so uh, I wouldn't answer for the entire team, regardless. Uh, so once I've seen those, uh, you know, we'll obviously uh, respond and let you know uh, if we agree with David that all that's manageable. We'll certainly give a, a great effort to do so. Uh, anything that's not, we'll, we'll say, well, how about we, and, and once we find out the uh, ex, a, a little clearer expectation from what David's looking for, it'd be a lot easier to answer. Uh, one thing that we do need to address is if these deliverables are met, an extension of that exclusive, uh, that ought to be the reward for an extension of the exclusive working agreement, at which time, obviously, probably there'll be more deliverables added to that. So that's, that's something I want to be uh, discussed and considered and included in the document. Okay. And I'd like to remind the board, they do seem to be the only development that is interested in that property. So some feedback on what Mike just said. I, I think it's a given, you know, you're not going to have a full submittal and everything flushed out in three months. And, and that's not the intent of our document. Our intent is to come to a, a much better understanding of your proposal at the end of three months. And I, I, I think in my mind, you know, given you an extension with some caveats of, of you working towards city submittal and city approvals within that second time frame, I'd be amenable to. Okay. Um, I apologize. I didn't realize that you had not seen and knew what these were. Do we have um, a consensus that David can move forward with Michael going through these with Mike and um, at the next PDA meet board meeting, we can make right. a decision that we can extend it or not. We need to approve something now. We've already we've already drug it out another. It's been like sixty days, I think. It, it, it needs to start. It needs it needs to start. No, I don't want to wait till the next meeting. Okay, after that. And I'm agreeable with that, but I, I think there, there's still some coordination we need to have, and I, I'd like to finish that tonight. And, and I'm comfortable with the technical aspects of what I'm requiring, if you guys have read through those and are comfortable with those. But I think I'd like some input from the board on, on what we'd require, you know, on, on as far as financial liability of the mm -hmm. project or financial mm -hmm. liability of the, the partnership. Yep. So can we do that through through our outlook, can we do that through emails so that we can do it in the next 
several days and, and get something approved to them or? I have a question for the city manager, maybe. Do you have any examples from other projects where uh, funding evidence or financial viability has been provided? Because what we're looking for is, is the language, since we do not have the attorney uh, identified yet, we're looking for language that would be legally sufficient to protect the DDA. Um, I could look into that. I don't know if offhand personally, um, but I could speak with our attorney and then potentially the planning department as well. And maybe we could talk afterward and find out exactly what that looks like. Or, or even, you know, open it up to Mike. If you have some, some documentation that's readily available that would provide us a level of comfort in moving forward with your group, um, maybe you could suggest what, what you may see as viable in providing and we could we start the discussion there. Uh, David, I could certainly uh, move that forward. Uh, as I discussed with our uh, Chad, our project lead, he had mentioned that as one of the uh, things that he did want to make a deliverable uh, within- Mike, we still can't hear you. Can't hear me again? Okay. Uh, as we, as I had a meeting with uh, a couple of the key uh, leaders, the CEO and then the project manager last week, he had mentioned uh, at least proposing and bringing a, uh, a plan, financial plan, the, the goal. And uh, so I don't know what all he had uh, in mind, but I can certainly appeal to him and find that out. It was going to be a, a, a roadmap to how the it can provide their financial viability, but also the roadmap as to how the project could be funded. Okay. I have no problem with doing this over the email and Zoom, John, if you can handle that. If David, you could talk with Michael and his development to see what they come up with going by this recommendations and then do some back and forth. I'm, I'm with John. We have drug our feet so long, they need to get on with it during the winter months to be ready in the spring, and I don't want to hold it up much longer. And that's fine. I can get with staff and get with Michael and, and see if we can come up with some documentation. Or, or Tony lives more in that financial world. He may, he may have some thoughts on, on, on what should be provided. Um, I have my hand up. I don't know if to, what the protocol is. Oh, we Sorry, yeah, we got couldn't the hand see. on the screen. Awesome. Okay. Oh, now we can. We can hear you really good. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll remind the board that um, a previous applicant, Natural Grocers, was required to provide a full financial package, and an analysis was done. Uh, I'm not asking for that here. I guess to start, um, in the spirit of what David's working on. Um, to have an understanding of, does this group intend to purchase Woodland Station? Do they intend to ask for no cost? I mean, what, are the, what is their intention with the property and the cost related to that? Uh, and they must have some sense of um, uh, additional expenses that are significant to them that they've been considering thinking about, you know, um, traffic study impacts and potential outcomes of that based on their use. So I think to start with that versus asking what a previous board asked for with a full financial package, I, I would just be more interested in uh, the start of their bullet point list of what they think their expenses are gonna be and what their expectations are of the DDA, just to keep it simple to start the dialogue and the process. I would think that providing them with any of the information that we already have, like information from the headwaters of Fountain Creek, um, any studies that have already been done, if we could provide them with some of that information that's already public knowledge, it's already been paid for, that might help them to expedite what they're doing. Um, I think that would be important to them. And of course, you know, the funding. Go. Did Mary, someone Mary, have their hand up? Yeah, me. Mary Jo, yeah, yes. I've already requested. Uh, Michael Lawson's been very helpful already with a couple of studies. 
uh, but also I requested through David that we get uh, the headwater study of Fountain Creek, but anything else that's been done uh, that is going to be necessary for us to look at, yeah, we would appreciate getting that as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, because that was an issue before with some of our development uh, questions and uh, CDOT was definitely an issue. And if we could find out the new members of CDOT and what's available um, under this new regime, that would help too. So if you're already working with uh, Michael Lawson on that, that's great. Well, but I don't know if Michael has the, I'm sure he can access it, but he didn't have the history that some of the current DBA members have as to uh, what all has been studied and done there. So any help? Okay, probably, from the, probably from Sally the would have that. And Mr. Williams, it was my understanding that a previous board member had provided you quite a packet uh, about a year ago. Is that correct or am I misled? Uh, I'm not, I would have to look back, Tony, but no, the, about the only thing I really recall having received uh, was the TIF uh, packet that at some point would need to TIF be packet. Uh, Studies themselves, I don't. Uh, Sally Riley had provoked, provided us a, a video at one time to show us the potential flooding from Fountain Creek Head. Uh, but other than that, I, and, and I won't say for sure, but, but no, I do not recall. I don't recall it anyway, so. Okay. Well, I suspect the, the TIF packet that you were referring to was one that Mr. Bourne and Ms. Carrick put together as a basic guideline for what to expect from a TIF application. Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Okay. Well, then that can be something that maybe, David, you could work with Michael and Michael Lawson as well to it, get that. And it would, and my guess is that, that Sally's going to be the keeper of, exactly. of anything available. And I actually have a meeting with Sally tomorrow, so I'll bring oh, it up. Awesome. Okay, does that sound good with you, Mike? Thank you. Yes. Okay, Michael, does that sound good with you? Okay, does that work good with the board? A head nod would be fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Then we'll move forward with that. And then once you get that information, David, if you could contact John and he can contact the rest of us, we'll decide how to proceed, whether we need to call a special meeting to approve it or whether we can do it over the internet. Does that sound good? So yes. Be, so that we can expedite. So there'll be a revised list. Or mm -hmm. I mean, we'll have, we'll have the financials added, right? Correct. Okay. And then we'll all view that be able to approve it online, which I'm fine with. And then this will be an attachment to the contract. Correct. Correct. And I think talking about the financials, I, I think we're looking, you know, at least I'm looking for more for an understanding of the overall scope and budget of the project and timing of implementation. I don't know that at this time we'd be looking for proof of funds mm -hmm. um, and maybe some, you know, projects that you and your partners have done that are of similar scope just to prove that viability. Does that sound good, Michael? Mike? It does. Okay. Did, did you, did you get what Tony said? We're like, are they looking for us to give them the property? Are they thinking about paying for the, I mean, are those things that should be on the list too, or does that just come up with later conversation? Well, I think that was later. what Tony was talking about, the right. expectations yeah. of right. the DDA. Yeah. And I would like to add expectations of the DDA and the city. And that's the point I was trying to get across is what is the expectation of the city, um, what they're going to provide as a part of their concept, as well as what is the expectation, and, and these are Tony's words, of the DDA, Mm -hmm. uh, similar to what uh, has been done in the past with other uh, projects. And, and I think that can be addressed in, in the budget portion, right? In, yeah, yeah. I was wondering. Yes. So that, that's yes. kind of yes. how they're looking at funding different right. aspects of the project. Right. Yes. Okay. And I, I would that. like to say that each of our projects has been on an individual basis on how it's handled and how it's funded. So this one would fit under that. David, just uh, please include those as sub points so we don't miss anything critical to what you're expressing. Louder, please. Oh, David, please include those as sub points under the budget 
so that we don't miss anything that you find is critical information that you guys need. And yes, I will add that under the budget, you know, section of those deliverables. Okay. Okay. Do we feel comfortable at moving on now? David, have you got this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Michael, have we got this? Okay. Thank you. Do y'all need me any further tonight? Thank you, Mike. I don't think so. Thank you for tuning in with us. All right. If I don't see any of you again, I'm sure I'll talk to you, but uh, may not as a whole. So uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well. Okay. All right. Um, new attorney discussions. Um, are we prepared to talk about that yet or do we need to table that? I believe Tony was the one that was going to research that. Tony, are you there? I am. Um, so uh, similar to David, um, I guess more about protocol. Uh, so three things I've keyed in on. We have three potential attorneys uh, to work with. Um, and the list I put together is we want uh, for the board a copy of the resume background, their fee schedule, and then an initial summary of a discussion with them and kind of uh, what they're about. But I perceive this, this board would want to um, uh, come down if it came down to one or two or three candidates to probably do some kind of uh, interview process. Is that correct? Just to get a feel for them? Yes. That's what I'm, okay, so that's what I'm asking for. So what I will do is uh, with the holidays, they're all a little backlog, but they are slowing down a little bit. Um, I will get out via email uh, to Rebecca so she can distribute to the rest of the board members, the three potential candidates and those three pieces of information. And then what I would suggest is we um, uh, try to uh, have that uh, interview process after the first of the year. Sounds good to me. Is yeah. it to the rest of the board? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. That covered the rest of the board? Yes. I have a question for Tony. That's good. Rusty's got a question. Tony, sure. Tony have you um, glanced at the RFPs, the, the format that the city used? when we went and tried for a city attorney? Uh, I haven't, that's a good idea. Um, I like formalized processes. I, I guess I just use one that um, I use in, in my world. Um, so I'll look at the RFP and see if there's anything there missing. Um, these are, I think, recommendations. And, and I will say for the record that the most highly rated attorney uh, for this area was a Mr. Corey Hoffman, but um, I deselected him as he was the expert attorney at the trial against the DDA. So uh, there was already a conflict of interest. So we deselected him already, but the other three come highly recommended and we'll see if they are willing to work with us. And I will uh, get a copy of that RFP to see if we want to follow a similar process. And I'll, I'll work with you, Tony, uh, with the city manager to see if we can track down uh, the RFP that we used uh, when we solicited uh, candidates. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would, yeah, I would just, um, uh, I guess, caution that uh, we're not talking about a very expensive engagement, we hope, if we do things right as, uh, as a board. Uh, so we need to keep that in mind as well. Oh, yeah. Th what I would expect is the city's RP is going to be much broader than what we would ever need uh, to start with. But okay. it's instead of starting with creating the wheel, uh, you might want to just take a look at the government um, format. Okay. Sure. Okay, Tony, then do you have everything to move forward on that then? Yes. Any other questions from the board for Tony? Okay. No. None, and we'll move forward with that. Okay, number seven is the vendor fee. Now, first of all, this is just, a, this is not something, first, let me explain what the vendor fees are that I'm talking about here. The businesses in Midland Park, when they collect sales tax, whatever the amount of that sales tax they collect per month, they are given a small fee 
that they deduct from that that goes to them for collecting the vendor's fees. Sometimes, and everybody understands that. Well, Some there's a little bit more. Ago, there's a little well, bit more that's, to that's that. Basic. Well, some the municipal time, code has. Let me finish. Let me finish, and then we'll get that. Okay. So, some time ago, um, they the city needed our vendor fee. That percentage that they took, the city needed the vendor fee for doing a project. I don't remember what that was. The project was finished. But rather than giving the vendor fee back to the business people and the collectors of the sales tax, uh, the city kept it and applied it to other projects. Now, this is only because the DDA represents the business district and the downtown <coughs> district and the people within that district. There are a lot of vendor fee of vendors vendor fee collectors in that. And this would just be while council is in budget mode and recommendations that that vendor fee either go back to the people that collect the sales tax or that <coughs> vendor fee be spent on something within that district that helped the community, the businesses, the tourism, whatever that would be. And I guess this is just, do we want to have a discussion about that? And do we just want to make a recommendation, which is all we can do because we have no say over that? That's city council. Rusty. Okay, I wanna clarify some facts and Kelly came forward because she knows the facts, I know the facts. And um, I'm gonna help you with a little clarification. The, the vendor fee is defined in our municipal code, 3.08.370. Up until 1994, vendors were reimbursed 3.3% of their sales tax collected. In it's compensation, credited. The credited, word is credited. Credited in compensation for the manual label of collecting and, and everything. This was before computer applications, calculators. It was viewed in 1995, and this is I'm reading straight out of the municipal code because it gives the history of the vendor fee. In 1995, the vendor's fee was reduced to 1% because automation was kicking in and the amount of labor was decreasing. It wasn't as complex. In 1996, the city voted to go to 0%. So the vendor fee is not actually possible to be given back to any business by city ordinance. The city budgets have actually had a, an accounting line item up through 2020 when the city council recognized and had a formal discussion that we actually were carrying a vendor fee that was being essentially stripped out of the, the either the 2% or the 1% for the 410 fund and was being held. Yet the language said that you can't give it back to the vendors anymore. So it was in this nebulous category of being pulled out of the sales tax calculations for accounting purposes, but never able to be done anything. The city council corrected the language in the city budget last year in which that line item went away. The language is not even used anymore. This year, city council, we discussed whether we were gonna reinstate it during the work sessions and the city council voted for no vendor fee again. So there is no vendor fee in existence anymore. So there is nothing that can be legally passed to the businesses any longer. And the budget was approved, the 2022 budget was approved by the city council last Thursday. So this is a topic that can't even be carried on until next year for the, the, that sitting council. And we need to be cautious. We are not a taxing authority. We have no authority to 
to collect or give out uh, tax money. Thank uh, you. Okay. Um, I'm going to um, uh, research that a little bit more to understand it a little further, and we will move past that I since it's already. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't see your hand. I, oh, sorry. I was waiting for you to get down. Um, you know, I don't have a big dog in the fight on this, but every little increment of uh, our efforts as business people um, is being taken advantage of by the city right now. Uh, every time I run a credit card, I pay fees for that credit card. It's part of that uh, fee includes the city sales tax, which I'm, I'm collecting for the city. A uh, little bit of effort. I don't know if, when did you say it was dropped? 1980 or something? 1996. 96. 96. Where, where credit card machines is prevalent back then. Because um, that's how it's all worked. Anyway, it's more the attitude than anything that when you get that. And we're not a tax entity, I agree. But we're having a discussion about it. And we it's a, it's a business community topic that we are suited to just have a discussion about and support the businesses. And Jerry, I think there, the reason why there is some confusion about it is because the state, the state has in fact reinstated a vendor fee. The state does provide back to businesses for collecting the, the state taxes but they blurred the line. In their language, they actually said, and to cover credit card fee, which was never the original intent of Woodland Park. It was just the labor. But the state really messed things up when they included and to cover credit card costs. They reimburse or they credit businesses. Yeah, it's a credit. It's not a reimbursement. They credit businesses 4%, I believe. 3.3% to cover the labor for collecting and to assist in covering the credit card costs. So that's where you do hear the credit cards come into the dialogue and it has confused people. The original city's definition of vendor fee and had nothing to do with credit cards. So then they have already stopped that charge of the vendor fee from the businesses that collect there's no charge um it's a it's the the name of it has been very misleading it's not a fee it's a credit of what you've collected from paying customers for sales taxes that you that is deducted from your liability on a monthly quarterly or yearly basis um, of what you remit to the taxing authority so with the state and the county, and it includes the county because the state mm -hmm. collects on behalf of the county, they give a credit that is a deduction from your liability for the sales tax that's collected of what you have to remit. There's okay. no fee, it's not a charge, it's not any of those things. And, and unfortunately it was, the naming was misleading and, and made people feel as if they were being charged to collect taxes on behalf of the taxing authority. So it's a it's not a fee. It's a credit of what you've collected from others. Gotcha. Okay. Does everybody understand that? And Just I'd so like to know. share that what Resty explained um, was exactly correct. And um, it it didn't have uh, it didn't have anything to do with a project. It was a discussion and something that the citizens and the council worked through in 1994, 95, and 96, um, which was right before Kelly. And um, we accounted for it and agreed, and, and I think it was in discussions and not in what was codified, that we would account for it separately to see what it looked like and to keep track of it. And over the years, and with comment from citizens and businesses, it was year before this one, it was, or even the budget year 19 for 2020, um, it was decided by the council 
that we would eliminate that line item. But, but we did also decide that we, we would use that as reinvestment in the downtown and in the areas of the community where businesses were running. Um, and so it was, it was a good faith effort. And we, we, don't, um, we don't want to jeopardize or discount the businesses in our community. They're very important to our citizens. And um, I, I, it's, and I'll just say, it's, and it's harsh, but it's real. It is not the business of the city or even appropriate for the city to be subsidizing business. And that maybe that's not what this is, but it is a reality and, and appropriate. So I just wanted to share that, some history, and um, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Well, um, you know, of course, and I just have to throw this out. The business, the city runs on taxes and it's the property taxes from the private property owners. It's the commercial taxes from the business people and it's the sales tax. So the city really does have to have business to operate the city. And I think that we need to work hand in hand together for all of us to be successful. Absolutely. That's my two cents. Absolutely. So we could move on. Was there any more comment on this? Okay, the Woodland Station development, I'm not sure what uh, that is about. Uh, we've talked to Mike Williams moving forward. Do we need to talk any more about Woodland Station development? Well, I added that to the agenda just to have a, I'll say a 30,000 foot view, just so we regroup what we're trying to accomplish here. You made a comment earlier today that Mike Williams is the only one interested. Well, I guess I've got to ask, what have we done to try to find any other real developers the last few years? We've had a few come by that were discouraged. So just trying to regroup and decide what we're trying to accomplish here because the clock is ticking on the agreement with the city. Even if there were bulldozers over there tomorrow, I don't think we would make that deadline. Okay. Now, my thought on this, that was what one of our workshops was going to be about, that we could just sit and talk about how to do this. Now, I do know that to answer that question on what we've done, Al, and I'm sorry he's not here tonight, but Al has made an effort to talk to different real estate people to um, list the property. He's talked to different uh, financial organizations, and I'm, like I said, sorry, he's not here to fill us in on what he's found. I do not want to repeat what he did or what he said because I don't want to mislead. But we have made an effort to advertise it, listen, <coughs> and try to sell it. That was one of our three-legged plans that we had on how to move forward with Woodland Station. Rusty? Yeah, I just would like to have something entered into the record uh, in response. Um, <clears throat> There, there are other developments because I, in my capacity as a city council member, have been working with the planning department and Habitat for Humanity trying to get the, uh, I think it was uh, uh, HR 2701 that approved um, $56 million in on a one-time basis and 85 million, if I'm remembering correctly, on a perpetual basis that would be provided to projects that um, enhance attainable and affordable housing. Habitat for Humanity has submitted a letter of intent to go after some of that funding uh, in the amount of about $250,000. All of the applications were submitted on time and um, there are 20 municipalities, 20-ish municipalities competing. Um, the DOLA uh, adjudicators who are going to hand out that 80 plus 50-ish million dollars um, 
met with Sally Riley and Keith Meyer, who represented uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, he's their executive director um, and provided them a description of the project. And uh, we are definitely in the, 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 the running. They were very impressed with the project um, for the funds. So what would happen is that money would backfill Habitat for Humanities current development out on 67 for the townhouses that have not begun construction. They could not ask for the money for the ones that were already under construction, but um, there were six buildings that they had not started. So they applied, they're eligible, and they are definitely a strong contender for the funds. If that money is provided to Habitat for Humanity, they are looking at a project uh, to come to the DDA board and propose. So okay, there good. is more, mm -hmm. there are more hoppers in the fire or more pokers in the fire right now. Good. Can I, Jerry? Yes, Jerry. No, you discussed this before and we talked that there were other areas that would be very well suited for this, not just Woodland Station. Now I, I got to ask you, is this why you appear to be pulling the rug out from Mike Williams? Uh, no, there are seven. Because of something that, that you achieved. And another observation. I, well, can I address that point before sure. we go to the second? Um, I did not make the presentation to the Habitat for Humanity. I am simply reporting to you as a liaison. Sally Riley made the presentation and laid out seven parcels of land that they could go after. So Habitat for Humanity knows the parcels. They know the pros and cons of every single parcel. Sally laid it out. It's their decision, not mine. They're leading it. They're following up. I'm simply attending meetings and taking notes and sharing information. Okay, second one. Oh, about forgotten, but um, no, Rusty, it just appears that, um, you know, you guys have stripped their attorney that um, Newt was the best in the state, uh, hands down. You've, you've taken him away. You've uh, uh, done everything you can to uh, muddle Woodland Station so that somebody else can take it. Now we already have an interested person. We've given, given them a uh, agreement uh, to development or uh, just not agreement to develop, but uh, to express their interest in it. And uh, I think that we need to let Mike have the opportunity to perform. Uh, we haven't given him that. He has rounded up a group of investors that are top notch, have a, a big history behind them, and we need to give them an opportunity. He was there, let him fail before you hand off this property. No, I am and I'd like to say to that too, is that this investment group, they are talking to other developers to join them in the project too, and that will come out at the end of the 90 days. And that's fine. I my, my reclama to you what you're saying, since I represent council, you keep talking to me because I am the representative, but the council is having these conversations and the council would has received a comprehensive plan survey results. Now I can't speak to the other council members on reading the three or 400 surveys. I read every one of them. Now, I sped read, but when you speed read, and, and you and I met on this very topic, and I told you what came out of the hundreds, three, three to 400 surveys, it is clearly they want development in Woodland Station. That is clearly what the surveys state. Another clear, they want attainable and affordable housing. So when we met, I tried to draw then certain diagrams on what I was trying to do, which is if there's a way to get something going in Woodland Station, I'm gonna push it. 
So Jerry, yes, I am pushing, I'm trying to push Mike Williams to provide a legitimate and totally presented, packaged, ready to go, shovel ready project. But if he doesn't have one, I'm trying to encourage other developers to come forward with their idea because the city wants it. And it's my job as a representative, <coughs> council member, to push anybody. Once we get an exclusive, then the ice can be thrown on all the other projects. But we do not have a signed exclusive right now. Until such time, I'm going to fulfill my obligation to the citizens to get something going there. Okay, just one okay. more point. I do remember number two now. And that is that is a prime business location development. We once that's gone, that's our business corridor right there. And I that is probably, in my opinion, not anywhere close to the appropriate place to put low income housing. Um, it, there's there's other places that are appropriate for it. So I didn't hear him say low income I, housing. And I don't want to go into the projects. Did it, I did say affordable. attainable and affordable. And I don't it's want different. to go into it because okay. it is a okay. very unique, let me finish Mary Jo. It is a, a it is so unusual that the Habitat for Humanity Executive Director for the state wanted to hear the idea of combining housing with business property under a Habitat for Humanity business model. I'm not going to go any further than that. It's up to them to flush that out, but it is not a housing only. Okay, Matt had his hand up. Yeah, you know, I was just following up with Rusty. I mean, we are, we are the DDA, right? It, that stands for Downtown Development Authority, correct? Yes. It is our job to always be looking for interested parties in developing this property. Always. 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 And I, we're, giving, we're giving Mike Williams all respect. We are. We're, we're giving him this 90 days. We're, you know, we're really, our skin's in the game with him. Mm -hmm. So you know, he's got the opportunity to present something great. If he does, that's fantastic. But, you know, I'm, I, along with everybody else, I'm, you know, I'm always looking for and keeping an ear open for people who are interested as well. Mm -hmm. So, because if, if something falls through or things don't work out for Mike Williams, he's been around a long time. I've only been here a little while, but I know he's been talking to the city a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Someone really serious could come in and, and things, things aren't materializing with Mike Williams. We've got to look at the serious people as well. Exactly. We are here to help development in that no matter who, what, when, or where. Right. And it's but it has to be it's not personal, is what I'm saying. Right. It's not right. personal. Right. I understand loyalty, Jerry. You're a super a loyal guy, but it's not personal. Well, how could you think well, it was personal from from him? He just he doesn't know no, from him. I'm not talking well, how, about this whole thing. But but it is business. This is business. Oh yeah. And, and can yeah. I say if now that if I if I'm allowed to say something, um I don't know who Mike Williams is, but I know that how many years has he been around <laughs> and been dangling the carrot out there? About I'm just two asking. And a half at three, this time. three years. About two and a half at this okay. time. And then but COVID wait, hit. So, wait, uh, so all I'm saying, okay. But all there. I'm saying is, is, is that's a long time. And so far, I haven't seen anything come out of it. Do I want to give him 90 days? Absolutely. If he thinks, Sure, I'd, I'd like, I'm on board with that. Part of me is not on board with it, but a bigger part is because I want to, I want to give him a chance because he has been around for so long, but it's, it's getting long. It's a long time. No, and I know that. I know that. That's all we're saying. And again, now we're back to these workshops that I've been trying to get to. This is exactly what I would like to dedicate a workshop to is talking about mm -hmm. the different areas in the downtown development district that need to be developed that need to be have some attention to how can we help someone come in to do which is habitat for humanity um, mike and i know that they're looking at bigger than woodland station so you know we're not closed to anybody and i really do want to uh, specify that and we really need to keep that first and foremost because we've only got 10 years left to do this. So we really need to be serious about it. 
Go ahead. And so I'd, I'd kind of like to get back to, you know, Arden's original reason for asking the question is, you know, what's the board's intent with the property? And, and maybe it's time that we seriously have that discussion and lay out some, some thoughts on what we really want to see happen there as far as whether we parcel it out or look for a master developer or, you know, look to, you know, find city incentive for infrastructure and make it more developable. I think it's time for us to have those discussions and, and move in a path. I, I mean, I've seen in the past that the board has done, you know, hired, you know, planner after planner and done study after study. And I, I'm hesitant to go down that path any further, but I think just a clear, you know, you know, statement of, of, of what we'd like to see happen may help advertise the development and find the right partner to fit with. Mary Jo? Yes. Yes, so, please. you know, you keep mentioning workshops and you and Mr. Good just, uh, did I hear you right? Both of you basically said that you know that these parties are, are very strong and you know who they are and they're very deep and they have a, a strong track record. Is that information that you can share with the rest of the board? Or that only, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm just curious what information that you have that we don't have, because I haven't seen any of that. I've heard uh, discussion that there may be strong parties or they could be uh, experienced developers, but uh, both of you seem to make statements that indicated that you had a deeper knowledge. And if that's the case, I would be interested in a workshop to discuss that because that could help oh. us accelerate this process. All of the knowledge I have on that is what Mike Williams has given me. And he, is, he has assured me of that. And I said, well, I appreciate your assurance, but until we see something and until you do something, until you are here with those people and we know who you're talking about, it's pie in the sky. So you have to get something put together. We can't just keep trusting in your word. And I did tell him that. Okay. And, and I assume that's the that's same. That's all I know Good. about is what he said. Okay. And he said that they are working at it. They've already been here. They've walked the property. They've already made contact with other people. He would ask rather than for it to get out into the public that they at least have some time to negotiate with some of those <coughs> property owners before the property owners tend to jack the price up on them. And we said we understand that, but it just keeps getting more public with everything every time we have a meeting it gets more public did you did you walk with him when he did you meet with I him when he not. came i was i was on vacation i was out of town did anybody represent no. did anybody walk them saying they represent the dda no no they were just here and they walked it and they did come in our store i was on vacation i was not there so my staff told me okay. that he had been there and then i talked to him and said they did walk it and they do have an idea and they have been talking about it. And that's all I know. Okay. And I do, we want to set a time for a workshop to talk about this. We were going to wait until after the holidays and then schedule some. Uh, do we want to have a regular meeting? Do we want a special formal <coughs> meeting to talk about it? How do you want to do it? I think right now the focus is trying to give Mike Williams the 90 days. Get him started. Get him yes. started. Let's see what happens with that. If we think... After 30 days or 45 days, he's not coming up with something. We think we need to do a workshop and move forward and explore our other options. And I think that's what we should do. Because we do want to give Mike Williams that shot. He's asking for it. Mm. Agree. Yeah, no, nothing that the Habitat for Humanity in Condola is going to occur. I saw those quickly. Habitat for Humanity houses, and those don't look low income to me. I'd live there in a heartbeat. They look pretty nice. <laughs> So I don't know where that yeah, low income sure. comes from. And I do I think that. that, and it it's may work low. down there, but I think there's other places it would work too. Yeah, it's, a lot it's, of attain, development it's attainable by the calculations. Not, It's not right. classified as a low right. income house. No. No. Okay, yes. Before we leave Woodland Station, um, I'm gonna change the tone here a little bit. And that is that I am going to uh, ask Arden Weatherford to recoup himself on any conversation or voting on Woodland Station because of your conflicts of interest. It's on the record, I want it st uh, stated, and uh, 
we will uh, pursue it however we have to. Go ahead, Jerry. Okay. Okay, Rebecca, out. did did you hear that? Oops. Hopefully she did. Okay, well, moving could, on. Could you do restate? We have anything? Yes, yes, Jerry, yes, I heard Jerry, it. Could, okay. Yeah, could you restate it for me? What what was your request? That he recuse himself, himself from any voting? Any discussion or voting on Woodland Station. Okay. I so, would disagree on the discussion. I would disagree on the discussion. Yeah. So because I think he has, I think we all sitting here have we have skin in the game for the businesses, including Arden and Arden Cares. Uh, when it comes down to the vote, I think that we're smart enough to know that perhaps it might be a conflict of interest on certain votes. And I agree with that. And I think he would even agree with that. Okay. Right. I, I'm not speaking for you, but I think he's, he's shaking his head. Yes. No, I, I, I stated it as I stated it. Okay. Uh, are you asking to make a moat? Uh, uh, no, he just chair. made a statement I'm, for the record. I'm, okay. I'm, so I'm, we're not actually making voting. a motion here. Okay. Okay, Rebecca, you've got that. Moving on to nine, the SEH proposal. I'm not sure what that's about. Well, that ties in with, with what we just talked about. And that goes back to always looking. So I wanted to revisit and talk about these people a little bit because I had been contacted them uh, springtime, April, May, maybe last year. And then just going through the uh, documents discovered this uh, proposal, but I never saw a, a presentation in a public meeting from these people. I did go through their website and found they have quite an extensive background and uh, done projects all throughout the Western states and Midwest, uh, mixed use infill projects, uh, uh, municipal, they build fire stations and lease them back to cities. Uh, so these people have a lot of experience and seem to be, uh, I'll say, active in the, the kind of arena we've been trying to get in unsuccessfully for 20 years. Uh, <clears throat> so my thinking is, what do we got to, to lose by asking them to come back and make a presentation? Mary Jo? Yes, Jerry? We, didn't we already vote on this uh, proposal? Uh, they wanted 29000 some odd dollars. City Council had just approved that we could uh, have the $30,000 budget. And then lo and behold, that's what these guys, David just got done saying that these studies that keep being done, we just spend more money and more money. And I think we all agreed to that on the previous board and already had put this to bed. But so why it's up again, I'm not real sure. It's already been previous, previous yes. board. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, if you would like to contact them and invite them back, I have no problem with that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not advocating. Let's spend thirty grand right now. Mm -hmm. I'm saying let's hear what these people have to say because I didn't hear before. And then going through the website is like, how do we not know these people? I went Did to these people seem, mm -hmm. These people seem to be a conduit to real financing, real developers, and we've got a hole in the donut here. I think it's worth a try. I have, if the board doesn't have any problem, contact them and invite them back to make right. another I'll presentation. I'll see if they can come to the next meeting. I have no problem because there was a reason we decided not yeah, to before. We can hear their program and we can decide whether we want to do it or not okay. this time. That I have no fair. problem with that. Do you guys? No. Anybody does? I would only think that, you know, we've kind of chosen to go down a road with, with Mike Williams and maybe it's premature to start the discussions on, 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 on jumping into a study. Um, I welcome the opportunity to sit down with the board and come up with a clear vision of what we're trying to do to help direct that. But, but maybe we, you know, at least start the agreement with Mike Williams before we get serious about, you know, other opportunities and so, other avenues. Yeah, I don't see those things being mutually exclusive, though. I, I look at them as puzzle pieces. I don't see the habitat thing as edging out anything Williams has ever talked about doing. There's enough room over there for all of these puzzle pieces, I think. And yeah, and I think, you know, in being involved in development projects as, you know, small ones, but um, you know what, we always have a backup investor as well. So, right, I don't think there's anything wrong with our board or our authority having a backup developer. 
you know, as, um, hey, we're still interested in talking, um, even being totally transparent. And hey, we've got an agreement with someone to present something, but this there's no deal done yet. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to it, but I, I agree with you, David. And, you know, let's see what Mr. Williams can deliver. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's something tangible, hey, you know what? This could be something that's gonna gonna work out. Great. And I agree. Talking with Mike, I think they're they they were open for additional partnerships in their group and in in bringing additional aspects in. So I think, you know, making those connections for them may be opportunities for everybody to get involved. Mm -hmm. That that was actually one of the reasons why I had Habitat for Humanity. Um, they were introduced to Mike Williams so that. If their investors, you know, didn't want to move forward to the project or whatever that fell through, Mike Williams individually, if he wanted to tie in with Habitat for Humanity, <laughs> Habitat for <Maybe>. Humanity, <laughs> they could at least put together other ideas. Well, again, to Matt's point, I'm always looking for fallbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know, Jerry, you want to criticize me because it, it appears I'm trying to pull the rug out from under Mike. I'm not. Mike, come forward. But I'm also, I, I want to hedge my bet by having a second in line and a third, I, you know, second string and a third string. And I'm always recruiting for my fourth string and fifth string. So that, that's my thought. I think they can run in parallel. I don't want to push, throw any ice water on Mike, but I don't want to turn down somebody if they would volunteer to come in with their expertise. I know the history of this a little bit more than the board. So uh, I, I wouldn't mind for free them coming in. Yeah, I, my, my, I just didn't want to start spending money on studies when we're in yeah. the middle of a process. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Like yeah. to hear what they can, yeah. they can do for us. Yeah. Yeah. Them in so I'll see if they can come to the next meeting. But I was also going to mention, you asked about a workshop. How about just start an hour early next month? Do it. I have no problem with that. Anytime I've been wanting to do workshops since um, and just, July. just on Woodland Station workshop. And, and that'd be what, fine. Start at 5 30 next month. Are we gonna have month? a goal for the workshop? Just just ideas, brainstorm okay. ideas. Mm -hmm. I think brainstorm ideas. I think to designate certain areas within our district, review our district, designate areas <laughs> that are prime for development. And how could we help do that? What would go in good there? What are some businesses that we could encourage coming to town to help them develop? Well, let's just talk. Let's see what we can come up with. I think we need a clear idea as a board, you know, what our, our preferences our goals are. are. Yeah, our mm -hmm. goals. What are our goals? And so I, I'll volunteer to, to print up, you know, large scale backgrounds because I have those for the DDA properties. Awesome. So we can you know, sit over some join tables and, and start I sketching. Like that. Yeah, that'd be great. May I suggest... Okay, then we would... um, David, sorry about that. Russ, Go ahead, man. There. Real quick. Um, I assume you, when you get that together, you can email us so we can kind of just have that yeah. a little bit beforehand. Yeah, for sure. That'd be great. Rusty? Uh, might I suggest Sally is going through a transition with Karen, our new planning director. Um, this, you may want to get as much information about um, the DDA's um, development potential from Sally before she leaves. Okay, got you got that. So then our next meeting will be the first, the first Tuesday of January. We'll be here at 5.30 instead of 6.30 and we'll have a workshop an hour prior to and possibly through the DDA meeting time. So if you want to bring your Wendy's hamburger, bring it. Okay. All right. 5.30 workshop. Okay. okay. And I will um, put together kind of a guideline on issues to talk about. Can I, and before, talk with you. Can I go down a few and, and maybe bring this up? Um, I'd like to propose that we go back to the morning this week. I don't like this. I mean, this is this is a lot of us have families. He's got a family. I got a family. He's got a family. Um, 
I think the mornings are better. I think it's better for the business. When I mentioned it, and I'm not going to mention any names, when I mentioned it upstairs, people were like, yes, the morning is the best time to have it, not in the evenings. So I'm suggesting we go back to the mornings. Hey, let's get a feel for the group. I mean, yeah. I guess Michael has something And, and, and uh, <laughs> also wanted to add on, at, I, I believe at 5.30 on the 4th, we also have the Colorado Municipal League scheduled to come and give the presentation that uh, Al Bourne had mentioned on, on board decorum and the le legal stuff. Um, so that, that is scheduled for that evening. Um, okay. We have a number of other city boards and commissions that have been invited to that. So there's a, okay, conflict. So there's a conflict that evening. So there, the, there, there would be, yeah. So we need to be to that too, but it won't be our meeting, it'll be them. It, yeah, it yes. would be their time. Even tonight, we, tonight this meeting kicked out the court, something, uh, another meeting, which they like to have on Tuesday. So we're, we're in the way on Tuesday nights for the, for the chambers. We're not in the way in the mornings. No. So that means we'd have to start at 6.30 a.m. I'm up at 4. <laughs> 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 I'm with you. Okay. I mean, I need right, to get a feel for the group around. if it's an let's option. Let's go around. So two on I mean, there. Yes, I, Matt. I, I don't have a problem with morning. Okay. Jerry? Yeah, I'm good with morning. I'm better with morning. My preference is mornings. Uh, my preference representing the citizens is the evenings. Uh, there's nobody, no citizens, or they're all going to work at 7.30 well, we in the have, morning. We, we haven't had doesn't any more. Doesn't yeah. matter now. We haven't yeah. had any more attendance in the evenings. And we they, have they Zoom watch. Huh? They watch on Zoom. Okay, so we got one now. We got some. Yeah, I'm just Pardon? giving my What's your opinion? <laughs> He's Tell a late nighter. Next. I know what it is. <laughs> I hate the mornings. Okay, Tony, what's, what's yours? I'll go with the majority. I have to be up early and up late, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, we got more mornings than we do. We got two evenings and the rest of mornings. So we have a conflict at our first Tuesday in January. So do we want to start it in January? Can we also, perhaps the fourth is too soon after the holidays to have our next meeting? I'm not 100% sure. Can we bump it till the 11th or is that, is that a no-no? It's fine. I'm, no. I'm just mm -hmm. asking. Oh, all these debates. <laughs> it's not a debate. There's a test. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we've, if we've already edge. got a <laughs> commitment for 5.30 on a Tuesday. Huh? Yeah, wait. <laughs> who's going to volunteer? <laughs> who volunteers to bring breakfast the first meeting? <laughs> I have no problem with 11th. Anybody else? I'll bring breakfast. Okay. No All problem. right, then our January <laughs> meeting will be the 11th at 7.30 a.m. Is that okay? Sounds perfect. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we are, we should be here on Tuesday night, January 4th at 5.30 for that workshop because okay. we requested that as well. Right, so the 11th. Say that again. Uh, so uh, the January 4th, wait, the evening at 5.30. When? January 4th, 5.30 evening. It's not our meeting, but it's a meeting we should attend. It's the workshop. It, no, that's not the workshop. That is, M Michael, what it, what is happening at 5.30? Who, who's doing the presentation? So this is the Colorado Municipal League, um, of which the city is a part of. And they, um, is one of their regular trainings, they do board member training, primarily intended for city councils, but it's also uh, geared for boards like yourselves, planning commissions and the like. And so Al Bourne attended that back when we had it several months ago mm -hmm. and had highly recommended it to this yes. board and others. And we did mm -hmm. vote to do that and request yes. them to come and this is when they came. So this is, we have requested to participate in this meeting as well. And it's 5.30 on the 4th. And I believe it's, it's either five or 5.30, let me <clears throat> see my, yes, and it will be here. And we have invited several other boards and commissions uh, to participate in that as well. So I have that at 5.30. 5.30, okay. And then we will send out, Rebecca will send out a reminder for it's January 4th January and for 11th. January 11th. Yeah. Okay, Excuse Rebecca. Me. Can you hear me, Ms. Larson? Yes. yes. Okay, what time is the January 11th meeting? Is it in the morning and what time? I didn't catch that. 7.30 a.m. Okay, thank you. I got it. Start that one earlier. Because if you wanted to have the 
workshop at 7 30 early at night. He gets up at 4 30. So <laughs> four, no, four. He gets up for some reason. No, we'll yeah. start it at 7 30 and we'll just we'll okay. try to just move it on. Okay. So are we going to formally start the DDA board meeting at 7.30 or the work session at 7.30? We're going to start the regular meeting at 7.30 okay. and it will probably turn into more of a workshop than a meeting because that is what we'll focus the agenda on is a workshop agenda. Thank you. Does that sound good to everybody? Mm -hmm. We may have a couple of business items depending on Mike Williams. We may have a couple of business items to tend to, but we'll try to move it into a workshop. Is that okay? So the fourth is no longer, right? No, the fourth okay. is no longer. The fourth is 5.30 here for the municipal Well, the fourth meeting. is not no longer. It's in the evening. There you go. Right. But not for right. the DDA. But not DDA. <laughs> Can I? Then January 11th is DDA. Before you leave this, uh, go into uh, yes. updates. Can I make a comment? Yes. Um, and that is that as I came in and I asked about like this SEH proposal, you know, how did that, and you commented that you didn't know how that got on there. Well, am I wrong in assuming that the uh, content of this agenda goes through you? Is that correct? That you're the one that... Right. Yes, so supposedly, if anybody wants on the agenda, they contact me and I present the agenda, can we, can and we, then that goes out through John. Can we remind people to do that, please? Mm -hmm. If you would, if you would, so it is, so what we did was we were, we're putting out a proposed agenda, and then, and then we're giving on, and we did that this week, last week, we, then we said, does anybody have any additions? So then we give board members the opportunity to add things. And, and that's and, and that was on there. And that was on through our through the outlook. And we did that. And then and then that's how we approved the agenda. Okay. Well, okay. Mary Jo is unaware of okay, these. then well, she's got to look. You have to look at your you have yeah. to look at your email. And I do have Pat did say to me too that the agenda didn't come out till yesterday. <laughs> and she said that's not enough time for people to see it in common, whatever. I'm just sharing what she said. Mm -hmm. So we have some things to work yes, out. We need to get the agenda going probably a week or well, more yes, before and, and not just the last few days because yeah. then it makes it a little bit hard. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, but um, legally, I think we're only, I think, I, and correct, I could be wrong, but if I remember today, 24 hours is legally all that we have to have it posted yes. on our website. Correct. Correct. And if it's posted on the website, <laughs> It doesn't have to be posted on any public spaces either. No. But we do post it in the public spaces, and we did. We did. We did mess up on the website this this month. Okay. We we still have some things to work out. Since sure. we're on that, they're gonna they're gonna ask Rebecca. They're gonna actually ask Rebecca to come in and do some teaching with her, so that she can have a little bit more. Uh, access to the website and be able to post things and know who to contact to make sure these things happen great that's our mistake and that we I didn't think, do this yeah. sooner and i think that that was a problem because we got the agenda on there like wednesday which should have been time enough for whatever correct i think that it'll work out i'm just sharing what pat did say so yes. we just need to follow yes. through and get it and now we're going to have to start with our time so we will handle that now, this uh, updates, we're kind of moving on. We're really past our time. These are just um, items for discussion. Um, I guess, can I ask Michael, can you give us just a little update on that tourism? Sure. Um, sure. So the tourism group um, hasn't done much in the past few weeks. We've been waiting for the consultant um, that was hired through the grant to put together the final report. Um, the consultant uh, fell ill, and so they're a little bit behind. We're going to be um, reaching out to our core stakeholders um, to schedule uh, a walkthrough for that report I, sometime next week. Um, I think those invitations will probably go out tomorrow, probably be uh, mid late next week. Um, and then the folks who participated in the workshop uh, on October 12th, um, once we get that date set, they will be invited to participate in that walkthrough if they're interested in learning more. Um, but we want to get that scheduled around uh, the core stakeholders first. Um, and so there'll, there'll be a, a, a number of recommendations coming out of that report. There will be a roadmap of sorts. Um, and then that will kind of distill down into a number of action items. 
for the city and the community going forward. Good, thank you. A good update. Um, and then CDOT Highway, I don't know if you all were aware, but they're going to resurface the highway next summer. So we're gonna be all locked down and whatever. And Michael, can you tell us anything about the CDOT Highway? Um, just more for information than anything else. Like, I think they're starting down by Cristola, am I correct? I, I believe they are starting down by Cristola, Chapita Park, and they're gonna be coming all the way up through to, I believe, Lafayette uh, here on the west side of town. Okay. Um, I don't know timing on that. Okay. So, spring, summer. Yeah, okay, so we need to just be ready and um, talk about how, you know, if we need to do something to help our businesses do that and that kind of thing. Um, that could come out in a workshop <coughs> later on. And then new, new development projects. Michael, again, I look at you. Do you, I see some dirt work being done around town. Can you fill us in on any new projects that are coming up and out of the ground? And um, that's probably out of your- Tamarack Park um, received, what is it? What, what was the official designation for what we did on Thursday? Preliminary plan. Preliminary, preliminary <clears throat> so it's coming. Additional use permit. Yes, and okay, that's, so that was approved by the council. And so that's um, 167 units. It's a ma pretty major project up there on 67 in Tamarack. Um, I'm trying to think. Of There's what some construction new. work down at the light at Walmart. They're on the northwest corner. Those are townhomes. Town yeah. Those uh, townhomes. There, so this. Like this Obviously, the board probably knows more about this area in the future. Um, I, I think I'm going to ask our new planning director to okay. to resume this role, um, particularly if we be back in the mornings. Okay. And that, that person would be far better equipped than me to answer that question. All right. That sounds good. Well, let me ask one more. The brew building was under a lawsuit. Has anybody heard anything if that's being brought to an end and going to maybe be developed? Wait, wait, the old bosses building, the brown building across Jerry's from junk. Gardens. Remember uh, Jerry's junk. Jerry's junk building. Oh, the red building. It's, yeah. It's next. been everything. <laughs> okay. The last thing they gave us, it's in litigation still. What that's what that's, Sally, Sally that's had what mentioned that one time. Okay. That's what I've heard. All right. Well, that was <laughs> a success. <laughs> we'll go for general discussion. Arden, let's start with you. Anything? Nope. Rusty? Nothing, thank you. David? No. Nothing from me. Jerry? No worry. I already brought mine up. Okay, Don, Matt, any general discussion? No, right right now. Now. From Matt. Uh, Matt, nothing? No, nope, okay. never not. Rusty? Yeah, hang for Matt. Did you get everything squared away with Sally I, on that invoice? I, well, you know, I did ask for every, I know everybody's busy during the day, but I did yeah. ask everybody to just reply all and we give me an approval. I know we did it in this meeting. Right, like, that's all you all need. All I gotta do is go down there and just tell her. And I know, just tell them and they'll cut the check. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go down there tomorrow. Because it isn't, isn't the approval at this meeting all that he needs? Yeah, yeah. is this, yeah, what is, yeah, what yeah, is, this, D, is this about, you haven't gotten the check for what? No, I didn't. I wouldn't get the check. It was, Mary the, was, for the, it was panel, the check for that the historical panel. That designer for the cog rail. Was that something you're taking to Sally? That I'm just gonna go down to I in the email I told her I'll just go down there. I just gotta go down and and do an approval or whatever. To the okay. finance department. To her or okay. the finance department. To the finance Kelly, department. do you have anything in general discussion? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk as a business owner in the district uh, for just a minute. Um I, I, this, those of us that um, do pay attention to you all and your activities um, and come to meetings, and I know people come on on Zoom, um, you know, oftentimes items on the agenda will require some good discussion. And in the public is the best place for that. And I know it's, it's hard, um, just one minute on the council hat, you know, we sometimes go late, really late because we get into some deliberation and dialogue and, and that's what this is for, your meetings. Um, always having to do a work session is cumbersome, not only on you all and your businesses, but on the public as well. And, and, I, and I'm here mostly as a business owner because I am in the district now. Um, 
And so I would encourage you all to take the time in your meetings like this evening to have those deliberations and have those conversations and not just put it off to another work session because it just continues to kick the, the can down the road. And I just would hope that you would um, take advantage of this meet, these meetings for that good deliberation because that's how you make progress. And, and so it's good for the citizens and then they don't have to come to one more meeting and neither do you. That's all I have to share. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Do you have anything to share? Uh, just to follow up on um, Rusty's comment, we do have a new planning and building services director. Her name is Karen Schmink. Oh. Um, she started yesterday. Um, she comes to us most recently from uh, county government in Oregon, but most of her career was spent with the town of Brush up on 76. Um, and she's done a little bit of everything up there and uh, has pretty extensive experience. Um, so I would, uh, I would encourage folks, um, if you like, if you have time to reach out to Karen, I've asked her uh, to go on a listening tour of the community of businesses and uh, developers and even homeowners and figure out how might we do things um, differently and more effectively in the future. Um, and then interfacing with this board would certainly fall into that category. So um, please, please do look for Karen. Um, she'll start uh, being here in person in our council meetings uh, starting in January. Good. How do you spell her last name? S-C-H-M-I-N-K-E. And the E is there for decoration. She touched me. <laughs> <Schmink. laughs> okay. That's a long, it's a long spelling for that name. That okay. Name. And uh, just um, Merry Christmas, to everybody. Merry Christmas. Thank you, yes. Michael. Merry Christmas. Tony, do you have anything you need to say in general discussion? Tony? <clears throat> we lost him. No, who's there? He's on mute. Is he, are you there, Tony? He turned off his video, so maybe he is stepped away. Okay. Michael, thank you for joining us. Do I hear a motion to adjourn this meeting? Motion. Do I hear a second? Jerry, motion to adjourn it. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Rusty. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. None. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming. I did feel a little guilty, though, since she got up and said we should knuckle down, but I guess we're not. <laughs>